Hey, it's time for me to get in front of the camera again after some weeks of traveling and doing summer stuff here in Michigan. I've got a couple of reviews I want to do of discs recently sent my way by Kino Lorber. And I don't know if they paired them up intentionally or if it's just uh, kind of a low-key coincidence, but the, the two films are 1954's The Country Girl, as you can see, starring Grace Kelly, Bing Crosby, William Holden, and then 1955's The Rose Tattoo uh, with Anna Magnani and Burt Lancaster. Uh, these were both multiple Academy Award winners. Uh, and the kind of the more common link is that Grace Kelly won her Best Actress Oscar Award for her performance as the country girl. This is the same year that she did Rear Window and Dial M for Murder with Hitchcock. Uh, but this is the award winner over uh, Judy Garland and The Star Is Born and uh, some other strong competition. And then Anna Magnani won the following year for the Best Actress Award uh, for her performance in a screenplay written by Tennessee Williams, a very sultry, passionate affair uh, about a woman whose uh, husband passes away very abruptly and she's dealing with the grief and trauma of his premature loss. I'll get to that review in a separate clip, but I want to focus right now on The Country Girl because uh, this is a very intriguing film. Let me just kind of show you the cover here. You see Grace Kelly in her, you know, standard beauty, uh, kind of a low cut dress, a demure pose, that perfect blend of sexiness and high class and even a kind of a purity, if you will, about her. And then, you know, Bing Crosby, Mr. Happy-Go-Lucky, always got a tune on his lips, kind of a laid-back, casual fellow, uh, you know, makes a little bit of fun of himself and all that. And then William Holden for some of that gravitas and seriousness. Well, uh, these this film uh, probably got a lot of its recognition as an Academy Award kind of Oscar bait movie uh, because uh, it cast both Bing and Grace Kelly against type. <laughs> picture of the country girl and about the wonderful performances given by my co-stars Grace Kelly and Bing Crosby. You've never seen either of them do anything like this before and that's a tribute not only to their own talents but to the size and power of this story. One of the great successes of the Broadway stage. Now when I say size I'm not talking about spectacular settings or a cast of thousands. This is the story of three people at the crucial moment in their lives. How they face it and what they become to each other. That's our story. Bing Crosby as Frank Elgin. A surprising and striking portrayal. Far different than anything else he has ever done. Grace Kelly, Academy Award winner for this, her greatest performance as Georgie Elgin, the country girl. George. And I might forgive even you, Mr. Dodd, if you can keep him up long enough for me to get out from under. All I want is my own name and a modest job to buy sugar for my coffee. Will you you can't me? believe that, can you? You can't believe that a woman is crazy out of her mind to live alone in one room by herself. William Holden as Bernie Dodd, another powerful characterization from the screen's top dramatic star. When you took this job, I promised you no pity. And no pity it's going to be. I don't expect any. I'm only warning you. Get rid of it. Let me go back to New York. So you can tell the boys at the Lambs Club that you quit because the part wasn't big enough? Oh, no. If you leave this show, it'll only be for one reason. Because I fire you. Because I fire you for being an unreliable, slobbering drunk. <laughs> Grace is de-glamorized. I mean, she's always 
you know, built as a beautiful woman and, and a, a person, uh, but here her looks are not as polished to their kind of platinum perfection as they were in some of those Hitchcock films. Um, in fact, she's made to kind of appear older and kind of worn down and, and beaten and discouraged in life. Uh, likewise, Bing Crosby here plays an alcoholic, a kind of a washed up movie star or, and, and performer who's really seen better days and is kind of going through a crisis of confidence. Uh, Grace Kelly, her character, is his wife, uh, who has kind of a heavy handed controlling influence on him but she has certainly been put through the ringer through his addiction to alcohol and all of the lies and the uh, skullduggery that goes on in the, in the depths of an addiction crisis of that sort. William Holden is the uh, kind of the theatrical producer who wants to give the Bing Crosby character a chance to kind of get back on stage and kind of salvage his career and maybe not approach his earlier heights, but at least get back to some kind of respectability and also to keep him productive and focused and kind of laying off the bottle a little bit there. But there's also an ulterior motive because William Holden kind of has his eyes on Miss Grace Kelly. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a little bit of uh, provocative tension and, and kind of an erotic attraction that you can sense between them. She, of course, is married. She struggles with her fidelity, but she's also feeling pretty let down by this kind of bum of a husband that she's been shepherding and taking care of all along. So you've got yourself a, a steamy little triangle of sorts. Uh, it's It never gets into really, um, what you'd say, kind of that hot and heavy, passionate kind of stuff like you're going to see in the Rose Tattoo. Uh, but it still really is kind of a, an eyebrow raiser if you think about the mores of the time of the mid-1950s. Of course, this is right there in the Eisenhower era. There's also some kind of, there's some class structure, political stuff, very, very low key. Um, but it is a writer who was uh, kind of in the whole blacklisted thing. In fact, he was a, a card carrying communist back in the 1930s and was a little bit uh, kind of worked over by Hollywood and the Un-American Activities Committee as they investigated that. So there's some, some really great behind the scenes uh, information. That's just one of the anecdotes that stuck with me from a commentary track delivered by Jason Nye. He's a film scholar. I'm not sure what school he's with. I think he mentions it in the track, but it's very well delivered and uh, full of fascinating insight about the film, the things that happened behind the scenes, the context of the film when it was made and when it reached its uh, kind of peak of popularity, and he even talks a little bit about why this film is maybe under-recognized at this point. I mean, Grace Kelly, of course, is one of the truly iconic stars of the 1950s, and really, uh, you know, it's an amazing story. Uh, her, her rise to cinematic success, a very small body of work that happened over the course of like six years before she retired from acting, married uh, Prince Rainier, of Monaco, became a princess, became a kind of a world figure, and then died early and, and, and somewhat tragically. Um, so that's the story of Grace Kelly and her role in this. But this movie does seem to have been slept on by a lot of people. Even though she's known, and she's even known as an Oscar winner, people may not know how she won it for this role, or they even see that side of her character, because it's definitely much more kind of, you know, gritty and, and emotionally overwrought. This, now, I will also say this. This is a 1950s film with some melodramatic soap opera overtones. So when you get to those key emotional moments, the, the music just really kind of blasts in and, and sort of programs the response you're supposed to feel. So you also just get the sense that this kind of came from a kind of a repressed culture in some ways, but this is a film that kind of helped break uh, the barriers open a little bit um, of, of people talking about some pretty serious issues dealing with addiction and, and lack of marital satisfaction and jealousy and envy and betrayal and, uh, you know, dealing with those types of topics on kind of a gut level of honesty that maybe wasn't really common in Hollywood movies of this era. 
So, yeah, I give a very strong recommendation to The Country Girl if you're a fan of 1950s cinema, if you really want to see three of these really, you know, legendary performers uh, cutting against the grain. I would say this is a pretty typical kind of William Holden part, but he does an excellent job in it. Uh, there is some Bing Crosby singing, so there's a little bit of that entertainment value in there. Of course, the Oscars, if you're into the Oscars, this is a significant entry. I think it won three awards, maybe just a couple, but nominated for seven. So this was considered state-of-the-art Hollywood movie making of a serious nature for thinking adults, right? The Country Girl by Kino Lorber, a great release. Consider checking it out.